Another month bites the dust, another month's down, and I'm probably not allowed to sing that song because it's probably copyright. But I'm going to have a go because I thought it was a good intro. <laughs> Our fans from Kansas have written in and they're asking about a question in episode, bloody hell, what is it, episode 254. Honestly, I don't remember episode 254, but we're going to have a crack at it. They're asking about when I was mentioning the fact that when you're making queen cells in without a whole lot of grafting and carry on, you can actually cut the frame off and you can create another ledge. The principle of the exercise was that if you cut through the brood frame, the girls will actually use those eggs and create the queen cells down at the bottom of that cut. Because if you notice, if you ever do a natural split, the queen cells are usually all along the bottom of the frame and quite often they get stuck to the bottom of the frame and it's a little bit more fiddly to get them off. Whereas if you do cut the frame a little bit like that, then you'll get a nice row of egg queen cells across there. As long as you pick the right, I guess the right age eggs that are in there. So, But obviously... It doesn't have, not just cutting the frame is not going to create queen cells. You've actually got to set it all up and create the, the idea that they want to create queen cells. So it's basically a natural split, I guess you'd call that. But having said all of that, I've only done that probably twice and I've found out that you do a split and you get plenty of queen cells. And you, if you, unless you want heaps and heaps, you're going to get 10 queen cells anyway and eight of them are going to be really good and... You might muck a couple up as you take them out and put them in the other splits that you're doing. So depending on, and if you want more than 10 out of a frame, well then you probably should learn how to graft and do all of that carry on that you really get into queen breeding. But have a crack. Send me some photos if you get it working and you cut through the frame and you get a whole row of beautiful self-made queen cells. I'd love to see that photo. We'll put you up on the website and everybody, you, you can write a little thing up there and we'll give you a shout out. That'd be cool. Good to hear from you again. Someone's asking about the QR codes on the back of the bee boxes, which is a hell of a step up from my original idea of the playing cards in my notebook. That kind of got weighed by the side. My dear daughter-in-law was not overconfident that I'd get that to work, and she was quite right, because it got really crazy after a few, like 20 hives. It got silly. My, I don't even know where the notebook is anymore, never mind anything else. The other day, I was out at the bloody bee boxes with another beekeeper, and he was saying, what have you got that card on there for? What's that about? I said, oh, well, actually, I think that was just to give the, when I was doing the breeding boxes, that was just to give the queen something to line up to when she flew back. And he said, oh, that's a good idea. So next thing you know, he'll have cards on his hive as well. So you never know, you know, the truth is what you make it. But anyway, sorry, I'm not really answering your question. I don't even know what the name of that blooming QR thing hive is. I think, it's I think it's a Hive Plus. I think it is the one we're using at the minute. And it's quite good, except you really need someone with you that isn't having their hands in the bee box when you're doing the inspections, because once you get a bit sticky... I mean, you do make a bit of a mess. So I normally have my offsider coming with me and she's popping in the information so we can check against it later. You, um, but yeah, no, it's quite good. You want to get a little stylus so you can actually type on the, type on the screen without getting your sticky beehive fingers all over it. And It's called B plus. Well, there you go. It's actually B plus, a different one. The hive plus got the chop, so we're on the B plus. What you really need is a diligent offsider who likes bookkeeping, which is I'm luckily you've got one of them because she likes to keep the books neat and tidy and everybody organised. And Although every now and then I do ask where the bloody hell is hive number 27 and it's like, well, I think that had a dead out, but, you know, here we go. <laughs> I'm going to have to put my glasses on so I read this verbatim. Is it verbatim? Verbatim. Word for word. No, John's giving me that look. Here we go. I have a very good friend who's written me a response from New Zealand. So if you're wondering where this question is referenced, you can go to the basics of beekeeping, and I'm talking about with honey extractin, and you need to have a little bit of a look at that, and then we can have a look at this answer. So rather than me going through the whole dilemma of all of that, because there is some honey that will give you a trip, I'm seriously going to go to somewhere in Africa and get some of the honey that gives you a high, but... I'm still waiting for my Patreon supporters to send me enough money so we can all go there and get bent together on this honeycomb. But So if you want to see John and me go to South Africa and eat some honey off the side of a cliff and get totally zonked, just hit us up down here somewhere in the payment bit. I don't know where that is, but that ought to be fun. That would make a hell of a good episode. But on it, I digress. Let's just read what he's got to say for himself. In New Zealand, there is a bush called the Tut Tut Bush. And it creates a tut tin honey. 
And I'm probably pronunciating that wrong because you need a good roll off your tongue if you're New Zealand. So it's not really... If, forgive me, my New Zealand fans, if I'm not pronunciating that correctly. <laughs> but anyway, sorry. Anyway, and then apparently it's on the South Island and a whole lot of stuff on the North Island, so pretty much New Zealand, has this bush. And you can get it laboratory tests. So is it apparently if you get the right amount of it, it won't them and um, do you any harm but he says here that if it's got too much neurotoxin one teaspoon of this shit will kill you man okay now if you're thinking about sponsoring me to go over and have a teaspoon of this particular tut tut honey that's not going to happen because one teaspoon is going to do me in and then the show will end so that'll never do well yeah hell you know anyway don't do that because that'd be mean but if you want me to, if you want the other idea i had earlier that could be good what has it got here it says it because it actually attacks your central nervous system. Oh, which is a bit bloody hectic, isn't it? So imagine that. Imagine that you could sit down to a piece of bread, toast, and a bit of honey and some cheese, and next thing you know, your fucking brain stops working and your cactus on the floor. I mean, damn. What the hell? Could you imagine that? I wonder if, mind you, I wonder if someone was really cool at marketing over there, they should get some of that and put it out for the ants, wipe the little suckers out. That'd be a cool idea, because ants and honey go together. I wonder if it'd, mother would mess them up, little buggers. It's like a sweet death. It could be a sweet death, exactly right. Or if you had crows that you didn't like, you could put it on a post. Slather it on a bit of bread for your, for your unwanted auntie. Hang on, that could be a bit rude. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I digress. And cardiovascular activity. He's very, this, obviously, he's not going to, right. Brian, it says here, which of course is responsible for brain activity and all cardiovascular activity necessary for life. Oh, wow. i tell you what, that sounds pretty hectic. A neurotoxin that'll wipe you out. Man. Boy, oh dear, oh dear. I suggest you have your tut tut honey checked by some scientists before you sell it into the marketplace. <sighs> Wow, thank you, Darren, for that piece of information, I tell you what. I hope I've spread the word, don't eat tut-tut. Is that why your mum, when she sells you off, she goes, tut-tut-tut? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, oh, and the last question is a bit more sensible. So after extracting the honey like we did in that um, basic beekeeping, so you basically you haven't got an extractor, so you've scraped the honey off, Yes, you can pop them straight back in the hive. He's asking, are you allowed to just turn them into the hive or do you have to wash them? As long as the general concept is, like I said in that episode, if you're putting them back in the same hive, the girls don't mind. Don't probably do it too late in the afternoon because they do have to clean things up and there is a bit of dripping and carrying on. And sometimes the ladies will be sitting out the front licking each other clean because it can get a bit exciting when there's some honey astray. But actually, waste not, what not. So put the frames back in there and the girls will use up what's left and clean everything up lick it all clean lick each other clean and away you go again thank you for tuning in for the may q a may q a that nearly rhymes i tell you what who knows and hopefully hopefully you got something out of that if you're enjoying our show don't forget click like subscribe tell arnie pete because you know the more people that watch the more people that love us you never know we might even end up in england if all things go to plan but who knows you well, this YouTube show is already in England, but we might end up on the telly in England. <laughs> but you don't know. 